When we were investigating the case of Nicholas Romanoff, and we have this heteroplasmy, we realized the power of that heteroplasmy, but we really didn't have a technology that was able to detect these heteroplasmic sequences. And now, with high-throughput sequencing, it's going to make it more powerful, more compelling, and it's going to help solve more crimes. I'm excited to be here at Penn State to talk to Mitch Holland. He's a renowned forensic scientist. Me too. I have been reading his papers since college. He's been working on some amazing cases. Like the Unknown Soldier, 9-11. Or the Romanov case. Hi Hello. Mitch, great to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome to Penn State Forensic Science. Thank you. Nice to meet you. So what are you up to here? Well, we have students who are working a mock crime scene. Oftentimes when we find skeletal remains like this, we have to do DNA testing. You know, isn't DNA degradation a big problem? I see it's all wet and... Right, and this could be an old skeleton and may have very little DNA or highly degraded DNA. And so we do have methods that are able to work on samples like that, like mitochondrial DNA testing. Is this what you did in the Romanoff case? That's exactly what we did in the Romanoff case, and we were able to use mitochondrial testing to identify Nicholas Romanoff. more about the Romanov case. Well, Nicholas Romanov was the last Russian czar, and he and his family and members of his staff were assassinated in 1918, and the remains were unceremoniously buried. And then a number of decades ago, the remains were, were found, but it was just the suggested remains of Nicholas Romanov. It really wasn't a compelling piece of information anywhere that these were actually his remains. So finally DNA testing came along and we used mitochondrial DNA testing to help identify the remains of Nicholas Romanoff. In this case we had a mixture of DNA sequences called heteroplasmy that really increased the strength of the, the match and the identification. Can you explain heteroplasmy for us? Sure, I can use the, the spheres here to, to do that. So heteroplasmy is simply a mixture of two different mitochondrial sequences. So as we look in this sphere, we have yellow balls and we have blue balls. And so it's a mixture of two different sequence types. Normally, when we're, we have a sequencing technology that really only allows us to see the yellow colored balls, without a special technology like high throughput sequencing, we're really not able to see those other sequences. So how do you get the mitochondrial DNA out of these bone samples? Well, the first thing you want to do is to clean the surface of the bone of contaminants. And you can do that with a Dremel tool. You actually just polish the surface. And then you take a sampling of the bone, grind it into a powder. And the reason you grind it into a powder is you want to have more surface area to get the DNA out of that powder. You do that with a solution that just leaches the DNA out of that powder. And now you've got it in solution, but you need to purify away impurities. But once we've purified away those impurities, we have our DNA extract that we can work with. So we were talking about the SAR and his brothers. So how does heteroplasmy impact a study like this? It has a tremendous impact on the investigation. In this case, the remains matched the brother at a position that shared heteroplasmy. And when you share the heteroplasmy, it increases the power of that match. And so in a normal investigation, when you don't have heteroplasmy, it might be one in hundreds. With the heteroplasmy, the power went to one in 300,000. How would high-throughput sequencing help in this kind of analysis? In the case of the, the Romanovs, when they looked at a living relative, they didn't see that heteroplasmy in the living relative. And that's because the technology would not enable them to see it. With high-throughput sequencing, we can see those low-level sequences and make those comparisons and make those matches stronger. We have noticed that the Tsar and his brother have notable differences in their heteroplasmy. How does that happen between siblings? And how do those ratios change so quickly between one generation and the other? If we start with a mother, and on this side we have a lot of X's and just a couple of O's here, then she has that particular ratio of these mitochondrial sequence variants. And as we pass through that generation, pass through that mother to the other side, her offspring can have, because of a very small bottleneck, now a lot of the O's instead of the X's. And so that makes the ratios different. Now this is one of her children. Her other child can actually have 
maybe closer to her distribution. So now we have X's and O's here in a distribution that would be much more like the mother, but vastly different from the brother. High throughput sequencing is gonna be a critical element to being able to do this on a routine basis. It's amazing to see how sequencing is changing the field of forensic genomics. You know, I was really surprised to see the difference sequencing heteroplasmy can make. It really increases the discrimination. It's almost like going from an analog system to a digital one. And it's opening a new era in forensic genomics. Definitely.